Hi, and welcome to the Blacksmith Shop. I'm Jessica. Today's video is gonna be about always keep learning. So specifically, this video is something that's kind of been a interest of mine, uh, and that is laser engraving. And I was first introduced to it about five years ago. We went to a woodworker there in Dayton, Ohio, and we wanted to have some custom uh, laser engraved boxes made for our products. And I'll try to include a picture here. And he did an excellent job. The crates were beautiful. Uh, he did very good finish work on them. And the logo itself looked really nice. And so for several years, while we lived in the area, we purchased the crates from him and uh, it, it worked out nicely. But two years ago we moved and we came up to a rural area in Michigan and we did not find anybody up here that um, did the same type work that he did. So what we ended up doing is Roy made his own branding irons and we used those instead. Now they had a neat effect to them, but it was very simple design. Wasn't, we weren't able to get the same full effect as our regular logo. And so we kind of dabbled in the idea a little bit of getting our own laser engraving machine. Now, besides just getting it for that fact, it just appeals to me in general because I am a creative person who likes arts and crafts and things like that. And so I saw some of the projects that uh, our woodworker in Dayton was making and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I would love to do some stuff like that. Now the machine he had was like a $10,000 uh, machine. And so it's like, well, that's cool, but I don't know how practical it would be for us to actually get into that considering our main um, area of expertise is metalworking. So kind of, you know, kind of been thinking about it on and off a little bit here and there. And uh, recently, within the last year, we started looking up and finding out that laser engraving machines uh, were now available for the hobbyist on a small scale. And so we had started looking into that a little bit, uh, not too seriously, but, but finding out more about it. So when a company named Niji approached us uh, about two months ago and they said, we would like to send you a free laser engraving machine, would you be interested? And if so, you know, be part of our affiliate program. And I'm like, sure, why not? You know, something I went to do already. I would love to tinker around with that. Uh, so we said yes, and we had them send it to us. And so that's what this video is gonna be about. Um, little side note here, I by no means uh, have very much experience at this. I'm pretty much a newbie. So my viewpoint will be that of a newbie and hopefully uh, the information therein will be helpful to you if you are new to it as well. So the one that I selected for Niji to send us was the Niji Master Engraver 2S Plus 30 Watt um, Engraving Module. And so I picked this one. It was not the largest one they had, but it also wasn't the smallest. It was kind of in the mid range. And uh, I thought that would be a nice size. The laser that they offered, this is one of the stronger ones that they had. So I thought it would be great to try it out for that fact as well. The overall dimensions are 470 millimeters by 550 millimeters, which is approximately um, 18 and a half by 21 and a half inches. Now they claim it can engrave all sorts of materials such as plywood, leather, plastic, black anodized aluminum, corrugated cardboard, solid wood, veneer, MDF board, black acrylic, stamp rubber, painted metal, and bone. I'm gonna share some pros and cons with you. I'll start with the pros first. Uh, I believe it was very well packaged. There was lots of foam in there, so all the parts were um, really padded. You know how shipping goes, sometimes things get rough. Uh, but everything arrived very well, and the padding would protect it from a lot if there was an issue um, with the shipping carrier. Also, uh, the build quality is high quality. Um, pulling it out of the box, there is very little to do to assemble it. I think it's like four screws and a few things to plug in, so it's super quick to plug in. Also, it is fairly inexpensive compared to a lot of lasers out there. Now, this is more of a hobbyist type laser, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's skeletonized, which helps them keep the cost down, I'm sure, but makes for the easy assembly, like I mentioned. We had it put together in just a few minutes. Also, the Niji software is very simple, and you can be cutting uh, with it with just a few minutes of installing. They have some preloaded graphics, so those are great to try out right away. I started doing that um, as soon as we brought it out into the shop, basically. Uh, but even before I started 
uh, laser engraving, I tried out their software. So the first thing I did for the software is I went to the Niji website. Uh, they mention it in their little booklet that they send with it, uh, what the link is, and I'll try to include that down in the description. So I got the download for the Niji software, and I also got the Inkscape, um, which is a separate, it's a separate download, uh, but Inkscape to create the files that you can burn in the Niji software. I've, I have not personally had any prior experience with Inkscape, um, so I'm starting to learn it, and uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Now, so far what I've used it for is importing other DXF files I had, and then I would um, go ahead and do go through the steps of how to convert them to uh, NC files. So I watched a, another creator do a tutorial on this, specifically for the Niji machine, and um, I found that out through a Facebook group. So I will go ahead and drop the link to that tutorial if you're interested down in the description below so that you can watch that if you wanna learn more about using Inkscape, Inkscape and Niji together. And now for the cons. The first one I would like to share is that Niji has very minimal instructions. Uh, some of it's broken English, so it's difficult to understand some of the information. Now the workaround for that is that there are some Facebook groups where people share information and it's readily available through those groups. Uh, I personally have found two of them really helpful and I will put the link to those Facebook groups down in the description below. If you have a Niji and you're trying to learn more, it's a great way of doing it. Um, I've gone as a complete noob and asked some questions and got some great responses and they have a bunch of information already there in their group files. So definitely. Um, check that out. Another con is that setting up the extension for Inkscape is a little tricky. You have to add a specific um, extension that goes with Inkscape that's for laser engraving uh, that you have to download through the Niji website. So uh, again, I mentioned this a little earlier in this video. I will have a link to that down below also so you can watch the video on the walkthrough for that. Another con, if you don't attach the machine to a work table, it will wiggle around on you and you'll kind of get some blurry lines and stuff. So you'll want to avoid doing that by attaching it. It's got some holes and some little brackets that you can attach with and you'll have to provide your own screws or uh, little bolts to keep that attached to your workspace. Also, large designs will be very slow to engrave. You'll want to keep that in mind as well. Everything is in millimeters, so for those of you like me who are used to working in inches, this is an inconvenience, um, but I'm starting to learn how to convert a little bit at a time, and I guess I'll be proficient before I know it. You will want to use a laser engraver machine such as this one in an outdoor space or in a shop space that's well ventilated, not inside your house. It does definitely smoke off and it puts off some smells and stuff from that, from burning the wood or your other materials. So make sure you take that into consideration on where you make your laser engraving space. Now, Niji claims that you can cut through three millimeter plywood. I have not yet had success of doing this. Um, I know a lot of people in the Facebook forums for Niji recommend an air assist. I haven't gone down that route yet, so I cannot currently um, recommend this laser engraver for cutting. Right now I'm only recommending its laser engraving qualities, which are very good. I think they turned out great, and I'll show you some examples and the photos here. Here's just a few other side notes that I thought you might be interested in knowing. Um, one is that you're going to need to focus your laser in order to get uh, the best resolution. And I found a video that shows how to do this by ramping a board. I'll put a link to that down in the description if you want to see how that works out. Uh, definitely helped me get mine properly uh, focused so that I got, could get a nice clean line. Uh, you see this in a couple of the things I cut on the board one where it's kind of a fuzzier, wider line, and then another one next to it where it's a nice, clean, crisp line. So that's definitely important to figure out the height that the laser needs to be from the board or your work surface that you're cutting. So one of the applications that we will definitely be using this for is to laser engrave our own lids for our products. We're looking forward to being able to send customers orders out again like that. Um, maybe making some keychains, we'll see. 
I'd like to hear what you guys think that this would be really good for that kind of applies to blacksmithing that might be a good crossover between laser engraving and blacksmithing. So feel free to comment down below what you think might work between the two. A few other tips I'd like to share and it, one is that you should have a disposable board where you are uh, laser engraving especially if you're trying to cut through. Um, again haven't had very much success on that myself yet but that way you don't scar up your work surface. Another one is that results are going to vary. Uh, it's a trial and error process. I've asked in the groups for tables on cutting through different materials, and they said it's really gonna vary depending on your own environment and the height of the laser and the focus and everything. So there's so many variables that you can't really get a table that works for everybody. So you have to have a lot of um, trial, a lot of trial to figure out what'll work best for your specific circumstances. One of the things I did cut on here was a six and a half inch logoed circle. Uh, I had it at three millisecond burn time and 70% power. And that took a total of 13 minutes and 39 seconds. So that is just a little reference for um, how long things can take. And if you cut something that's the size of the, the full bed width, and um, I can imagine that could be quite lengthy, especially uh, if there's a lot of detail in it. Lastly, I would like to recommend buying some higher quality glasses than um, what they send. There's a video I watched where the guy went into a lot of specifics on uh, what's needed to protect your eyes with different lasers. And so I highly recommend you go and watch that. I'll put the link to the video down below. And so you can kind of research that for yourself and see um, what glasses you wanna get, but take that into consideration. So if you watched this far, thanks. I'm glad you made it all the way. Even if you are not interested in a laser engraver and you just came along to see what we're up to in the shop. Uh, again, you know, I titled this video, Always Be Learning, because it is important. It's important to have things that you're learning about, whether, you know, that's blacksmithing or whatever type of craft that you're into, you know, just having passion and being able to express yourself is such a wonderful feeling. And I hope that all of you have something that you can do in your life and have that expression and creativity. So thanks for watching this video and remember to comment down below what you think that this laser could be engraved, um, this laser engrave, engraver could do that would tie into blacksmithing. Love to hear those thoughts and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.